Good morning and welcome to our Monday morning Time in the Word devotional. I'm Pastor Will. It's great having you with us here today. I'd like to begin our time together this morning by reading to you from the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 8, and then verses 16 to 18. Hear the word of the Lord. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who had been born, the king of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all of Jerusalem with him. When he called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem and Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out for them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. And then over in verse 16. When Herod realized that he had been outwitted by the Magi, he was furious. And he gave orders to kill all the boys in Bethlehem and its vicinity, who were two years old and under, in accordance with the time he learned from the Magi. Then what was said through the prophet Jeremiah was fulfilled. A voice is heard a Rama, weeping in great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children and refusing to be comforted because... They are no more. May the Lord bless the reading of his holy word. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity this Monday morning we have of coming before your holy word. And Lord, we would pray that you may teach us, instruct us by it through the guidance of your Holy Spirit. Open our eyes, open our hearts to the truths you would have for us to learn here today. And Father, I would pray that these words that I speak here would be found acceptable and pleasing in your sight. We pray this in your name. Amen. Throughout the course of this coming week, we're going to be looking again at the biblical account of the Magi's visit to the, to the Christ child to pay homage to him. The truth is, the story of the Magi is not just a Christmas story. The truth of the matter is, in all probability, the Magi did not visit the night of Jesus' birth. They most likely came sometime after that blessed event. You will note here in the text I just read to you that Jesus is referred to as a child, not as a babe. And with that, you'll note that, G that the Magi found Jesus and Mary in a house, not in a stable. This fact being true means that the story of the Magi visit is indeed fit for any time of the year, not just Christmas time. As we look at this story, we find Three very different reactions to the coming of Jesus. The same reactions Jesus receives even today. This week, I'd like for us to consider these three very different reactions that Jesus received at his first coming. And I'd like for us to begin this study by taking a look at King Herod's reaction to the coming of this one whom the Magi said was born, the king of the Jews. Now, as we look at this text, we are told that when King Herod heard 
the Magi came looking for the one born the king of the Jews. We read that King Herod was disturbed. And all of Jerusalem was disturbed, we're told, as well. Herod was disturbed due to the fact that he was the king and that this child he saw was a threat, a threat to his rule, a threat to his kingship. And Jerusalem was disturbed because they knew Herod well and they knew that there was definitely going to be trouble. So when King Herod tells the Magi here in our text to seek out this child, and they come and report to him where this child was so that he too could go and worship this child. Well, that wasn't really the case of all. Simply put, he wanted to know where this child was. Not so he could come and worship him, but so they could come and murder him to eliminate what he saw as a threat to his kingship. The point was, Herod was not going to share his throne with anyone else. King Herod saw himself as the master over all. So when the Magi um, went home a different way to avoid running into King Herod, we read that King Herod took matters into his own hands and had all the children, ages two and under, in Bethlehem, all the boys, rounded up and killed. Indeed, there was reason for Jerusalem to be disturbed. In the same way, many reject Jesus even today. Many, will you see, want to be king over their own lives king of their own destiny. And they do not want Jesus having a say over their lives. And they certainly do not want him on the throne of their lives either. So they reject Jesus. Oh yeah, they might be okay with the Savior part. I mean, who doesn't want to be saved? It's the Lordship part. It's the Lordship part they find uncomfortable. All the while, all the while failing to see that Jesus is the greatest king one could ever have. A king who loves us. A king who wants the very best for us. A king that we can trust with our own lives, our dreams, our aspirations. So let's receive this King, this Jesus. And let us seek to live for him and all that we say and all that we do with our lives. Well, that's about it from here today on Time and a Word. I hope to see you next time on Time and a Word when we take a look at another reaction to the coming of Jesus, the reaction of the people's chief priests and the teachers of the law. Till then, blessings. I'll catch you later.